And now our revered guru begins the satsang with a Sanskrit prayer. Om Purnamadaha Purnamidam Purnat Purnamudachyate Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnameva Vashishyate Om Shanti 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 We begin with Mystic song by Shri Swami Lalita Randa, played and sung by Shri Uma Swami Uma Nanda. <laughs> song this evening is entitled "O Holy Mother, Touch Me." It's a devotional song to Goddess Saraswati. If 
I could only see your golden smile Let me keep your footprints in my heart I must shine like the moon in blue skies Or release me with a We are recording from the ashram of Amir Dvigu in Miami, Florida. Today is Tuesday, December 29th, 2020. Tonight Swamiji will be lecturing on Yoga Vishishta. This is series 2018, class number 301. And now our revered guru. Oh. Brahmanandam param sukhadam kevalam gyan murtim dvandvatitam gagan sadrisham tatvam asyadi lakshyam ekam nityam vimalam achalam sarvadhi sakshi bhutam bhavatitam trigunarahitam sadgurum tam namam om Adoration Sadguru who is Brahman the giver of supreme bliss, embodiment of pure consciousness, one without a second, vast as the ether, infinite, eternal, beyond the three gunas and their modifications, the supreme preceptor. Yoga Vashishtha Nirvana Prakarana Purvardha, section 40 continues. Lord Shiva is imparting wisdom to Sage Vashishtha. And Sage Vashishtha is relating this to Sri Rama. Just as crystal surfaces reflect the beauty of flowers as well as the ugliness of spiders, but are ever untouched by those reflected objects. Think of a mirror. Put a spider near it. <laughs> and look into it. The spider has got it to the mirror. Take the spider away. Put a flower near it. And look into the mirror. The mirror has grabbed it completely. Take both away, look at the mirror, mirror has nothing. The conclusion, the mirror was never touched by it. That's the 
subtle insight into pure consciousness. You are always conscious, but conscious of so many forests of, of troubles, conscious of so many limitations, consciousness that is sustaining all the, all the study of the whole universe past, present and future. All that consciousness is <laughs> like reflections in, in the mirror of pure consciousness. So relative consciousness versus pure consciousness. This is a subtle subtle point in understanding profound philosophy of Vedanta. All your experiences are based on projections of the mind, vrittis of the mind, thought waves, it's like a cinema show. All the show you see is based on projections. While involved in a show, you are going through many experiences of pleasure, pain, thrill and, and terror. But nothing of them is real when the projection is, with, is withdrawn. It was a screen that was screaming in the form of <laughs> your projection. So it is divine awareness that is screaming through all your awareness, no matter how ticklish, now no matter how little, and no matter how magnanimous. In the same way, consciousness of a sage continues to reflect the pleasant and the unpleasant conditions of life without being tainted or affected by them once you become rooted in pure awareness then relative awareness comes or goes it has doesn't matter Whatever relative awareness brings about, you remain, you are untouched. The sky is untouched. No matter whatever may be the condition of clouds. So that is istita pragna state, the goal for every soul the goal of all religions of the world that's described as in, by in different names God and Absolute Brahman and so forth. When the true essence of the worshipped self is understood and realized then one's entire life converts itself into a perennial process of divine worship. This is the description of divine worship. To be ever aware, I am that absolute consciousness. Any effort you are directing towards that revelation is a real process of worship. Worship is to take you far away from worship. If it doesn't, it takes, keeps you confined to the relative world. Worship means 
a predicament where your soul continues to incarnate and experience cycle of birth and death. So no matter how pleasant the ship, it's a warship. But as long as you are confined to war, warship, you have not come to the grip of real worship. Just to give you a simple insight about that, it doesn't mean that you should stop your worship. It means to, de to develop a deep sensitivity, what you are looking for in performing your worship. But when we are talking about worship, all devotional activities, beginning with being initiated into Ista Mantra, that's a, the perfect divine key to open the treasury of spiritual progress. In Ista Devatas, choosing Ista Devata, your mind goes after so many gods, but you are more drawn to a particular deity. I'm leading you from the very early stages, the kindergarten stage. Now, you are gradually introduced Say, for example, if you are worshipping Lakshmi Devi for money, with all the money with you, you are not happy. Now your mind turns to, whom should I worship? Someone gives you the insight. Worship Sankat Mochan Hanuman. You will take away miseries. So, now, how do you handle how worshipping Anma and Lakshmi? If you are Mand, Dalavit, then you keep both worship in your mind as separate types of worship. When you worship Anuman, you don't want Lakshmi to do it. <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> the idea I'm leading you to understand that you should not feel any contradiction if your Ishta Mantra has a specialized role. <laughs> Shiva is a destroyer. But he can give you everything. Shiva can give you all that all other gods can give you. Simple way to understand, all gods are only one god in different aspects. So no matter which aspect you have chosen, your mind must understand the source behind that chosen aspect is the one absolute god. And therefore, praises of God coming through different gods and goddesses so many people having their different Ishta Devatas, they can't just sing the bhajan of only one deity. So in satsanga, all deities, gods, goddesses, and they must all, you must enjoy every praise given to any deity with a deep understanding that all this is being directed towards the God. And the God is where pure consciousness, which is ever-present reality. Understanding that it is for the sake of the Self, all things become dear to you. Nothing is more delightful in your personality 
than to have something that is endearing, something that you that can fulfill the cherished wish of your love, love fulfillment. To love and to be loved, both fulfilled in a profound way. And the simple answer behind it is pure all your own awareness. That's what you foundation of all your love. So allowing your understanding to open the window to the revelation Aham Brahmasmi is the climax of all devotional practices and all forms of worship. And if that intent and clarity of insight has entered, then any ritual you perform becomes profoundly dynamic in, in its spiritual potency. It has a different effect. It goes on purifying your heart, cleansing the path leading to enlightenment. When the true essence of the worship self is understood and realized, then one's entire life converts itself into a perennial process of divine worship. And the worshipper becomes completely free from the taints of the world process. The worshipper becomes one with the worshipped Having known Brahman, you become Brahman. And the question of being born doesn't arise. Section 41 and 42, dealing with the falsity of the world. Sage Vashistha asks, O Divine Shiva, if Brahman is beyond the reach of the intellect, how can an aspirant attain realization of this Divine Self? Lord Shiva explained, the sattvic modification of the mind brought about by the practice of serenity, self-control, study of scriptures and the guidance of Guru enables one to overcome ignorance and attain the realization of the Self. So in this divine worship, these points have to be followed. What are those points? Your mind must be focused on four gatekeepers. Are you enjoying serenity? Are you progressing in it? If you are doing it, your worship is successful. Shama, serenity, contentment. Are you becoming settled within your heart that God is looking after you? And whatever needed will come to you. Do not compare yourself with others and stay in a state of agitation or discontent. But allow your heart to develop a sense of blessedness. How blessed it is that I am a human being. How blessed it is, however way I look. 
because through this setup I have all the possibility of spiritual progress leading to enlightenment. Why do you know that? Because deep down you are the divine self. God is your inner source. God is your reality. Moving from lies to the shining truth that the purpose of divine worship. Don't be a liar. A washerman <coughs> uses one type of soap to remove the impurities from clothes. There are, when you wash a cloth, cloth firstly, why are you washing? Because there is impurity. But what you apply to remove the impurity is another impurity. Both must move away. So, the methods you have adopted to neutralize your sinful karmas or your negative qualities, the method that you adopted to control your anger, those methods must move away when you discover that <laughs> anger is not your essential nature. Anger is something like headache. Headache is not normal. Normal state is absence of anger. But when you are subjected to anger, you are given the whole sadhana of three S. Suppress, substitute, sublimate. But when you have done all that, then let the three S out. You don't have to practice it. Wash your hands with soap. But ultimately, let the soap be washed away. These days you hear it again and again. <laughs> In the same way, by the purified function of the intellect, which in itself is in the realm of ignorance, one is able to tear the veil of ignorance and attain the realization of the self. The effects of rajas and tamas are washed clean by the predominance of sattva. And finally, sattva too is removed and transcended. That's what called triguna tita. How three gunas operate Rajas tamas create gross impurities. Those impurities are washed away by increasing sattva. When all is washed away, then all the three gunas move away. You are beyond the three gunas. Pure prakriti. And pure prakriti is magical power of Brahman. Nothing but Brahman. Aham Brahmasmi. And that's the state of absolute purity. It is the self that sees the self. Always there is a concept in the mind of darshan. That when will I have darshan of God? But darshan always implies two duality. You will be here, God will be in front of you.
But divine darshan, the profound level of darshan, is totally different. It's a revelation of your own self, because God is the reality in your personality, who is the thinker, who is the enjoyer, who is the seer, who is the source of your iPad. I'm talking about the ego, ego I. And the ego I has created all this through nervous system, brain and nervous system. Brain and nervous system is act like iPad. Very more, million times complicated than your iPad. Because your iPad is a trace of the power of your psychological iPad, the mystic iPad. And that reveals the absolute power of Brahman. Because as many souls, so many iPads, they are all operating through their nervous system, experiencing countless situations, having countless expectations, lots of dreams and tumbling from one embodiment to another. All is all in the in the, in a realm of a dream like experience. Nothing real. So any darshan that you have in this realm is always a means to an end. It is not the darshan. It doesn't mean that therefore it should be that we should move away from the idea of having darshan. No. Every little thing that can inspire you is perfectly commendable in your sadhana. That's what vibhuti yoga is. Every, every little thing, the little flower, smiles at you. That smile, see God's smile. So, this point has to be understood. That when you say God alone is being worshipped, that doesn't mean that you suddenly move away from the whole world. All your sadhana continues, every detail, but your spiritual sensitivity goes on deepening in a profound way. So in that realm of darshan, any, any situation that allows you to develop inspiration, insight, there is darshan. If you're an animal that has suddenly released the stress from your mind, it's mangal suchak, not ominous but auspicious. People look forward to auspicious experiences. Walk out and suddenly see a beautiful peacock spreading the wings, welcoming you. You know your day, you have, you have made your day in the best way. See, this is the darshan of God. Similarly, so that you can go on extending by your understanding lots of experiences. You get darshan of God through communing with children. Darshan of God in many ways. But come to more solid darshan when you have guidance of, of spiritual preceptor. There is guru darshan. Now, in your dreams, 
if you get certain darshan of certain deity, that's all inspiring, all is perfectly in order. Only thing you should not develop, that, oh, I had darshan of Krishna when I was only eight years old. And now I want to have darshan of Rab. <laughs> I'm joking. Your darshan, whatever you had, was wonderful. But real darshan is the revelation. Aham Brahma Asmi. You are not different from that God. If that experience dominates, now you are having the darshan. Until then, relative form of darshan is perfectly normal. As long as you understand this is, these are means leading to a divine goal. Self-realization is not brought about by a guru, scriptures, or diverse spiritual practices. Another point to understand, all your spiritual practices are not bringing something from the world and presenting to you. All spiritual practices are meant for you to realize who are you? For you to realize your innermost self. So no, no sadhana is going to give something different, but only awakening your understanding about your own self. So that your own self, Brahman, is not given as a prasad. And nobody can do so. It is revealed as an ever-existing reality. However, the importance of guru and other spiritual means should not be ignored because they serve the purpose of purifying the intellect and kindling the flame of spiritual aspiration. Any step you are taking that will puri that purifies your heart, purifies your intellect, and enhances your spiritual aspiration, any act that you do is perfectly commendable and it is perfectly needed. Without it, you cannot progress. The self is realized in the same manner as a person discovers a forgotten necklace right around his own neck. Sometimes people become so crazy <laughs> by <laughs> excitement and nervous stress that necklace is right there. The lady losing her patience, <laughs> shouting at everyone. And in shout, so agitated, and people can't answer. They are all terrified <laughs> because she is wearing the necklace. It's right on her neck. Even a better illustration is the flashlight. <laughs> Looking for a flashlight. And you look everywhere. <laughs> 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 
shouting at everybody. And nobody understands. That's a ridiculous predicament. The self is revealed as the underlying reality of the mind and senses. That self that you are looking for, that the highest form of darshan, the highest goal of worship, that self is the one that is manipulating your mind, the energy behind your mind. What the light of lights, all things you experienced by your senses, but the senses themselves can do nothing unless there's a mind behind. And mind can do accomplish nothing unless the intellect is behind the mind. Intellect can do nothing unless the, div the divine is behind the intellect. And the div absolute divine is Brahman. So, where is the greatest pilgrimage center? Right in and through your own personality. When can you visit the center? Every moment. When will you have the darshan? Question of darshan doesn't arise. You are the deity, essential. So this is the highest form of worship. Until then you are in a warship. It is this same self that is known by various names, this attainment, is the absolute attainment. And that's the goal of all religions. But different names are used for that goal. Ekam Sat Vipra Bauda Vadanti. Truth is one. But sages and seers speak of the truth in different ways. So every religion creates a little change in their expression of the absolute self. But the goal is exactly the same. That self is called Brahman, the absolute. Shiva, ab absolute auspiciousness. Paramatma, Supreme Self, Ishwara, the controller and ruler of all. All these are synonymous. The knower of the Self continues to worship the Self until he becomes one with that Brahman. So this is the entire worship climaxes in realizing Aham Brahma. And the whole process is a real religion, a real devotion, a real worship. But if it is not so, no matter how much austerity you are doing, with your distracted mind, you are simply intensifying your ignorance. Therefore, even demons have been presented as those spirits that have done countless austerities as a, as a result of which they became so demoniac. In other words, demoniac Negative trait develops in a person as a result of repeated practice. Positive develops the same way.
ignorance causes the rise of ego sense this avidya brings about asmita the soul conditioned by ignorance follows in the wake of the ego sense how does this pure consciousness get in, involved in the tangled world of the world process pure consciousness is as if lost in a thorny de desert the world process called jhanj manj if you are suddenly find yourself in a forest and forest has come closer you are coming to the grip the trees are on top of you creepers are all around you thorny bushes are around and who is looking at you lots of hands then that's called dhanya manj state and the mind is constantly holding on to that predicament because of ignorance because of lack of guidance lack of satsanga lack of sadhana so led by this process of a downfall from the status of pure consciousness there is no real fall but is an apparent it becomes associated with speech action and intellectual knowledge consciousness gets involved with three dimensional process three lokas practical reality sentimental reality and your thought insightful reality three stages all these flourish on the basis of consciousness and all these flourish as reflections not as reality therefore mature as parent takes the pledge of sanyasa me i renounce all these three and this is an act of profound worship of god caught in the ma maze of the conditioned knowledge of the world the soul is unable to realize its intrinsic knowledge of the self endowed with the power of recollection the function of memory the soul becomes involved in sankalpas worldly thoughts and desires it projects the mind and begins to operate through it memory has two aspects worldly memory and divine recollection spiritual shuddh smriti shuddh smriti is is highly commendable sadhana and is called sumiran smaran remembering god but that process is a process of a revelation each time you have experienced something positive it has been a sense a little revelation of that is what you are in a deeper level but that revelation you forget due to clutter of lots of memories of the world worldly values those worldly values and that memory 
must move away. But as long as you are driven by that memory, you follow the law of karma. Though infinitely expansive, the soul becomes identified with the physical body and its limited surroundings. Have to understand the reality in you, Aham Brahma. How great! Can't imagine it. But you have forgotten it. Now your reality is: I was born at a certain time. I born in the family of that, and you have a big hereditary story, and you have big work story of the yugas and you have the virus yuga and so forth. All that memory that goes on entertaining your personality day by day, memory after memory. Millions of memories you create and you dump them when you pass, pass on to another embodiment. Sometimes without going into another embodiment, not sometimes, all the time. Millions of memories that you had from your childhood, they simply move away. Behind all these memories, instead of having the, the bhajan of worldly memories, allow a sense of recollection, revelation, and affirmation the real I am. Firstly, God abides in me. And let me love God, let me have darshan of God. And already I have given the idea of the Ishtra Mantra and all the details. Follow the whole process under proper guidance and begin to understand that in that process of worship you are offering divine flowers of non-violence, compassion, virtuous qualities and you are opening the doors of, of liberation, shama, santosh, satsang, vichar, ending up Darshan of all darshans, Aham Brahma. That's the sketch of profound worship and this I will conclude. Om Ram 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 Om Namah Shivaya Om Namah Shivaya Om Namah Shivaya Om Prayer for shower of Karuna Maharas grace of God with the blessings of Shakti, Bhakti and Mukti and the absolute darshan Aham Brahma Om Triambakam Yajamahe Sugandhim Pushti Vardhanam Urvaru Kumva Bandhana Mrityor Mukshyama Amritat Om Sarve Bhavantu Sukhena Sarve Santu Nidamaya Sarve Bhadrani Pashyantu Makashti Dukhabhag Bhavet Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Before we conclude, remember that uh, this Friday night, instead of lecturing on the Ramayana, you'll enjoy Swamiji's New Year's message at 7.30. Thank you.